come join us as we dive deeper behind the scenes of security and cybercrime today, interviewing top leaders from around the world and sharing true cybercrime stories to raise awareness. But first, a huge thank you to all of our executive co-producers who subscribed to our Prime membership and fueled our growth. So please help us keep this going by subscribing for free to our YouTube channel and downloading our episodes on Apple or Spotify podcasts so we can continue to bring you more of what matters. This is Cybercrime Junkies, and now, the show. I'm your host, David Morrow. In the studio today is a special guest, Heather Monahan. Heather, welcome. Thanks for having me. And also in the studio is my fantastic innovative and fun loving positive co-host mark mosher yes. mark how are you and out of all those adjectives and descriptors i appreciate the positive probably most of all thank yes, you yes that was my insincere <laughs> things to say to co-workers well, it I was used. very heartfelt thank you so that's good so heather welcome so let's start right from the top i would love to hear what you're currently doing right now and then we'll get into your books and some of your new initiatives Yeah. So since the pandemic hit, my business had to change completely. My speaking engagements were my number one revenue driver and Mm -hmm. took up the majority of my time. So since then, I've really leaned into doing my podcast virtually, which is not how I used to do them in person and really focusing on the podcast as well as I launched a group coaching program for salespeople. I launched one-on-one executive coaching I wrote my second book, Leapfrogging Villains, for HarperCollins Leadership. That's the working title right now. So I love that. That's people have been asking me, how did I get to where I am today from the moment I got fired? So essentially right. the book answers that question. Okay. Wow. At the end of 2020, something about social distancing not only protects from the virus, but from negative people, and you were you were firing your villains basically. I thought that was really cool. So when you said that as part of the working title, it just it kind of clicked and made sense right away. Yeah, I talk a lot about the importance of firing negative people in your life and, you know, really finding ways to attract the right people that want to stretch you to grow, encourage you and challenge you in positive ways instead of setting you up for failure, especially in corporate America. So if you could just explain to us from a high level kind of the events that occurred that really have triggered and started this massive arc for you, you would broken the glass ceiling, you made it to that chief revenue officer, made it to the C-suite, just like we're never going to be able to run bullies, right? How do you deal with that in the work environment? So I'd love to hear from you about that. Yeah, no, that's exactly, that's exactly what happened. I grew up poor and, you know, really focused on driving revenue from the time I was nine years Mm -hmm. old till, you know, now. So I always had a job and always worked hard and essentially, you know, for 20 something years was in sales and really mastering that craft. Then I graduated college, went to work for the Gala Winery, and then took a job as an equity partner at a young age in radio and took a $25 million property and turned it into a $55 million property in under three years. And when we sold that property, I really developed a reputation for myself in the media industry as the $30 million girl. So I then pitched myself for a job that didn't exist, VP of sales for a publicly traded radio (laughs) company. I was awarded that position and during my tenure there, I initially joined the company, they were doing 100 million annually. And then when I got fired, it was in excess of 200 million annually. And I had just been named in 2017, one of the most influential women in radio. And that was 30 days before I got fired. The backstory to that, that a lot of people don't know about is that I did a great job for that company, super proud of the work that I did, which Mm -hmm. obviously speaks for itself. However, I decided you know what, I'm spending all this time working, I'm spending all this time traveling, but I don't feel that I'm really contributing to the world. I'm making rich people richer is essentially what I was doing by driving revenue for that company. So I joined the City Year Miami charity about over a decade ago now. And I wanted to give back and help more. And I ended up getting put on the board of the charity. I was on the board for eight years. And during that time, I started noticing, I go to work during the day, I travel every week, I leave my son all the time. And now at night and on the weekends, I'm going to do charity work. I've got to find a way to meld things together to be more efficient. This doesn't make any sense, right? 
Hey everyone, as you know, we routinely discuss how risky it is for brands to rely just on passwords or weak old fashioned multi factor authentication systems. It's your brand and we want you to protect it. Today, we're excited to be sponsored by a next generation authentication platform, Beyond Identity. Did you know 80% of breaches are the result of stolen credentials? Why does your organization still rely on passwords as part of your authentication process? Beyond Identity enforces continuous risk-based authentication, a fundamental tenet of a zero trust security program. Check the link in our show notes and go to beyondidentity.com slash podcast to get a free demo. That's beyondidentity.com slash podcast to get a free demo beyondidentity.com slash podcast for a free demo today, or simply click the link in our show notes below. And now the show. Depends, right? So what I ended up doing is I said, you know what, I'm just going to launch my own personal brand. And when I do that, I'll be helping people so they can learn, hey, you don't have to you know, be born into a company or have a wealthy father hand you a business, you can create success and get become a chief revenue officer out of, you know, growing up in a trailer. And so what I did was a year before I ended up getting fired, I I created a personal brand. I made a very large financial investment in it, spent quite a bit of time really thinking it through in a very thoughtful manner. I met with a few different attorneys as well, because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to complicate things with the company that I was working with. And I saw Bank of America's chief revenue officer had a personal brand. I I thought, you know what? They're a million times the size of this company. Why can't I? So I launched it and immediately the GC and the CFO, both women came at me hard, threatening me and telling me you need to shut this down or you're going to be fired. And I said, no. And this was a pivotal moment in my life. I decided instead of running away and saying, okay, you know, you're telling me not to do this. I, I said, no, I'm doing something positive. I will put whatever verbiage you want on the website or on posts saying that this is not the opinions of my employer. That's fine. I said, however, it's my financial investment, my time investment. It will not interfere with work and it's something good for others. There is nothing wrong here. And I've met with an attorney and that sent them in a tailspin because Mm -hmm. they were not used to being told no. (laughs) And so for the next year, my working environment was pure hell and I was constantly being challenged and not in a positive way, you know, not responding to emails, setting me up for failure, not copying me on meetings, trying to cut me out, wow. really c- corporate sabotage. Yeah. And so I went to the president of the company at the time, who was the CFO's brother. And I said, you know, what is going on here? And he said, okay, just pull back the personal brand, Heather, tone it down. This is, whole branding thing is getting too big and it upsets other people. They're intimidated. And oh. I said, no, but it's helping people. So anyhow, I knew at that point, wow, there's a chance here that things could go sideways, but I never really thought they would because of my performance and the value that I brought the company. But then what I didn't know was that the CEO I'd worked for for 14 years would become ill and he chose his daughter, the CFO to replace him. And it was, you know, within moments after that, that I got the call. Wow. What a story. You know, that's part of, because I think I saw an, another really interesting thing that, that you, uh, kind of a statement that you made that I really liked was how to say, sorry, I'm not doing that for free when it comes to engagements and opportunities, whether that be speaking. David and I run into that in cybersecurity. People want, you know, just come in and consult me, come in and assess. Well, I really liked that piece that you had. Hey, sorry, I, I don't work for free. It's not a charity. So when you said well, that, it's kind of- funny when you, when you go out on your own after, you know, when you're in corporate America, people, you have a job description, job requirements, there's protocol, there's transparency. It's a little bit different when you go out on your own and start your own company, people will come to you and ask you for anything. Oh, you know, can you coach me for free? Can you mentor <laughs> yeah. for free? Can you speak for free? And at first, I remember this when I first started my speaking career back in 2018, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to put in some free work here so that I can build a reel so that I, so I did do that initially. So again, I guess there are exceptions there were right. for me. I'm not saying for everyone that you want to say no to every opportunity, you need to make that decision, but it gets to a point, And especially now with everyone messaging everyone on social media, I get so, countless messages every day. Hey, we'd love for you to speak for our event. Great. I'll send you to my agent. No, we want you to do it for free. (laughs) I don't speak for free, right? That's what I do for a living. And so I know that it's not unique to speakers. And like you said, it could be cybersecurity. It could be, you know, musicians, DJs, everyone is asked artists to do things for free. But if we don't value our own time, nobody else will. 
what's coming up. You you have a new book and and that's focused on the is it focused on the two letters that she handed you when when she terminated you and 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 how you address that or or is it about your life after that what's what's generally i don't want to give the book away i'm just curious in general what's the theme yeah no the book is about how i i made it to the top in corporate america as a chief revenue officer in media how i was fired and what happened day one after that and how i got to where i am today oh cool that's, That's going to be a great story. Yeah. So right now you've got, you've got a number one book on amazon.com. How, how can the listeners reach out to you? Yeah, there's a tab on my website, heathermonahan.com, where anyone can click for the coaching to sign up for the coaching. You had mentioned something about group sales coaching in my research. Can you maybe give us a little more insight on that? When I found myself in the predicament with the pandemic and all the speaking engagements canceled, I said to myself, what problem can I solve for people from the computer screen? And I thought, you know what, go and see what people are asking you for. That's what you can charge for. So I went to my DMs and I started, you know, making an Excel spreadsheet and charting what are the things that people are asking me for. And the number one thing that I saw in the DMs was people were asking for consulting and coaching. So I Mm -hmm. said, okay, I don't know anything about this. Uh, I don't really know what to charge, but I know that I need to move fast because speed to market's critical. If people want this, you want to be at the forefront of it. So I put a post up and I said, You asked, I answered, launching my first ever coaching program, DM me to sign up, limited spots available. And I had no idea. And unfortunately, when you don't do your research, right, you're going to leave dollars on the table, give too much. I did all of that. I charged too little and I gave way too much. Within a month, I was exhausted. You know, there was no time in the day and I wasn't making enough revenue. So I said, guys, I'm, you know, to all the people that I was working with, I said, it's been great. And what I've learned by meeting with a company that does this for a living for 25 years that tried to hire me, actually, they sat down (laughs) with me and they taught me the model. They said, so what you've done is you've merged two models, which is you're losing 50% of your revenue. What you need to do is break the two models apart, do one, which is individual one-on-one coaching and then do another one, which is group, you know, group program. So I basically took the same thing that I was doing in 2020. I broke them into two pieces and I'm doing it now in 2021 and it's, it's working out really well. When, when, when you work for somebody that is so aggressive towards you. People talk a lot in the workplace now about men harassing women and, you know, the Me Too movement made it more right. fashionable to have that conversation at the water cooler. What conversation is not fashionable and it's always the elephant in the room in any business. And I guarantee that you've heard this too, that, you know, people say, oh, you can't have two women on the same team. They'll be catty. They'll, they, they, you know, oh, here, here they go fighting again at each other's throats. We've all heard that. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a passive aggressive comical way of really identifying a huge problem in the workplace that no one wants to discuss, which is so many women sabotage, attack, bully, and manipulate other women in the workplace and no one wants to address it. Wow, Why do you think really that is? Wow. It's it's insecurity. It's 100% rooted in insecurity. And I know that firsthand from the it's person fear. that it's I work with. Obviously, yeah, you were there. Yeah, it's fear-based, <laughs> yeah, right? It's fear. fear-based. If you are very confident in the job that you do and who you are and your potential and your talents, why would you be threatened by another woman's success? The funny thing is a lot of these women that are ultimately incredibly insecure, they pretend they're perfect on the outside. So they try really hard to look perfect. They try really hard to be calm and together, but what, and they'll go and they'll be on the board of women empowering in this industry and, you know, on this magazine for women empowering. But what you'll start to notice when you get to know these people is they're not the ones calling when, you know, you lost a big deal or they're no, they're not there behind the scenes to pick you up. They're doing it for a facade. And that's what I saw in corporate America. There were women that really were champions of other women there to help you out and, and cheer you on but there were a lot of ladies that were not real. They were, they had this facade on and I wanted to call that out. And you can't imagine the amount of DMs I get from women saying, thank you for calling that out because it's happened to me so many times. Yep. That's amazing. So what, when, what practical advice would you have for someone in terms of a daily routine or something like that to build someone's confidence? Yeah. Great question. Well, everybody, it's not a one-stop solution. Like, you know, everyone should take fish oil. Here's the thing. Here's the thing with competence is that everybody has, there's ebbs and flows, number one. 
So I could be really confident at the gym and working out, but maybe I'm not confident with being a mother. I could be really confident at work, but maybe I'm not confident in a personal relationship. Everyone, in, in, it doesn't matter if it's you, me, or anyone, we're all gonna have these highs and lows based upon different surroundings, events, whatever. So it's really about tackling, getting clear on what is it you want to gain confidence in. I want to get more confident at work. I want to get more confident in who I am. Get clear on the goal, like anything, write it down. Give yourself yeah. a timeline. I like to start with 30 days. It's very manageable. Create a vision of what you're going to look like and what you're going to be doing in 30 days from now. I get everyone to focus on gratitude first. Try to get yourself positive and centered. Fire the villains in your life if you have any. Some people don't. Sometimes people are their own worst villain, but identify who are those negative people in your life and get ready to take action and remove those people. If, if it is you, you need to rewrite that narrative that you're reading to yourself. Maybe you're telling yourself a false story, but identify and take action to change it immediately. Leave yourself reminders if you need that encouragement. You know, I have a playlist that I listen to. Anytime I'm taking on a major stage, I run that playlist and it's psychology, it works. If you run something enough and through practice enough, the minute I hear the music, I go right into a zone that no one can break. Nothing will oh, nothing wow. will disrupt it. I, I will mm -hmm. go kill that speech because I've heard the music and it's a trigger and a notice to me to say, Heather, get ready, you're about to kill it. So there's so many different techniques and strategies people can use. Maybe you're someone who apologizes for everything. Someone bumps into you and you say, I'm sorry. And you're constantly shrinking yourself. Well, stop saying, I'm sorry, take a 30 day challenge. And instead say, thank you for being patient and waiting for me. Thank you for your understanding. There's so many, it just really depends on what that individual's challenges are specific to them. And there's a multitude of different ways to handle it all. Wow. That's, that's yeah, that's great. I'm curious. You, you're, you've got so much information, so many good inspirational points, so many good exercises and techniques. Was there anything in the past when, when you were younger or as a child, an event or a person or someone that kind of influenced you to, to kind of go down this path? You know, I had a really tough childhood. So I, I believe that when you grow up and adversity and difficult situations, that that resilience that you learn becomes a catalyst. You know, for me, that became a catalyst once I made it in corporate America to give back and to want to help others. And because I didn't have anyone that was leading me along the way and showing me the way, I thought, wow, if I can be that person for others, wouldn't that be an amazing thing? Yeah, now that makes total sense. I appreciate you sharing that. So what advice would you give to somebody starting out in a, in sales or whatever profession, right? And let's say they're female and they are, you know, coming across certain, certain challenges. They don't know how to handle a superior, right? And maybe that superior, they're, they're being asked some things and they're, and they're new. So they don't know whether, you know, is this really, is this acceptable? Is it not? It seems really inconvenient. Are they picking on me? And they just don't know whether, whether that person is a toxic superior or not. Right. What do they do? I'm journal. The number one thing is to journal. You need to, here's the thing. You already have the answer. I don't care if you're 21 or you're 46, right? Mm -hmm. You have the answer. The problem for me when I was 21 was I wasn't trusting myself. I wasn't listening mm -hmm. to my inner voice. I wasn't trusting my inner, okay. my intuition. So the number one thing someone can do is trust themselves. You already viscerally know the answer. When someone comes close to you, when someone's in your face on Zoom or otherwise, you get a feeling immediately. Trust that feeling. That is correct. So if you get this sense, you know what, this isn't right, then guess what? Probably isn't right. So you need to yep. speak up for yourself and you need to ask good questions. If someone's asking you to do something, this is a great story. It's in my book, actually. The CEO I worked for 10 days after I gave birth to my son. Right. Had you get on a plane, right? And go do yeah, the speech? Yeah, he, he called me on the phone and he said, hey, I need you to go give a speech. You've got to jump on a plane. I immediately said yes, because I wasn't valuing myself or listening to right. my intuition. What I would do differently today is I would say, thank you so much for the phone call. I'm really happy that you're thinking of me and would want me to represent you. However, did you know that I just gave birth? Right. <laughs> and I yeah, just, exactly. Like, I would just, however, but, are you crazy? There's no way I'm doing that. But you don't need to say that. Here's yeah. the thing. It's all about asking good questions in a right. calm fashion, right? And so that's what I would want to empower young women with is, 
trust yourself first and foremost. And then number one, and then number two, ask a good question. So if someone's saying to you, you need to work Friday night, all night and get this done. And you're saying, this doesn't sit correctly with me. Stop and get calm and ask a good question. Hmm, Jim, I'm not sure. Isn't there somebody else that you think could take this workload on right now since I have other priorities? Ask right. a good question and find out. That's yeah. a great, that's a great Don't way be afraid to, to ask. And, and yeah. really when someone's in sales, they're so used to just always saying yes, right? We always want to please everybody, right? And, and really the best, especially when someone's starting out, but really the best salespeople that are more seasoned realize you have to press, you have to ask excellent questions. That's what it's really all about, right? It's really all about, you know, the asking of questions and, and standing up for, for, for yourself and your position. That's really, yeah. Cool. If you, if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else is going to. So you have to realize your own self-worth first, or you will be the person that everyone's going to dump the workload on. Yep. Absolutely. That's yeah. Cause good. that comes almost like a cultural thing, right? You can see that I don't want to say yes person, but somebody that kind of gets pushed into that. And then you see, you know, it may be a different department head or a different direct report. And now they, they push on them a little bit now, you know, and it almost becomes like, I don't know, I've seen it a couple of times, not often, but where it's almost that person gets that moniker of being, well, they'll say, yes, just go, just go push it on her. He'll definitely do it. Just go give it to him. And it's almost like a negative culture that transpires, I guess. Absolutely. What, in terms of like other routines, is it, is it music that really gets you, it level sets you? I mean, it really kind of triggers you to be, to have that baseline so that you can go and kill it. Well, I mean, it, it, again, it depends on the situation. If I'm going right. into a big event and I'm nervous, that's something that works for me. If sure. I need to get calm and centered, scents affect me. Lavender is something that's very calming for me if I want to get focused. Mm -hmm. If I want to tap into creativity, I need to exercise. That's where my best creative moments, you know, so it's really oh, about wow. the more you can know yourself and, and learn, you know, what you respond to, the more you, you can operate at a much higher level. Wow. That's a really good point. I never thought of it that way, but yeah, yeah. Once you learn what, what those pieces are, I don't, I don't like to say triggers, but those, those parts that, that move you to that next level and you understand mm -hmm. yourself and you yeah. use those in a positive fashion to leverage them to push you to the next level. It's almost like a life hack, right? You know, it's, I like that. That's really cool. It's a lot like noticing how you feel when you leave someone's company. So if you go to lunch with a certain person and you leave energized and excited, it's worth noting that, wow, I feel really positive around this person. I respond well, just as well as it's worth noting, wow, this person I work for, every interchange I have, when I leave, I feel drained. I'm always questioning myself. Hmm, this is a villain in my life I need to fire. I can't work for this person. Yep. This is dragging me down. So it's really about noticing you, noticing how you respond to what's going on in your life. And for some people it's saying, I hate going to work. What, what do you do for a living? I'm an accountant. What are your passions? Art. Okay, well, why are you an accountant if you love <laughs> art, right? So it's, yeah. just, it's about getting to know yourself. Right, that's excellent. So let me ask you this. Did you, are there, who are some of your most inspirational people? Like who, who do you really find a lot of in, in, inspiration from? My son, for sure. I mean, my son, sure. it, having a child, you know, it's really about, especially during a pandemic where they're not with their friends, they're not at school, they're not playing sports. You know, it's really about when you want them to show up as the best version of them that they can be, that pushes you to become the best version of yourself. That pushes you to step into fear because you'd want them to. That pushes you to stand up to bullies because you want them to. And let's be honest, kids are going to emulate the people that are around them. Yep. So I have people yep. reach out to me a lot and they'll say, I'm, I'm struggling with my child. They're, you know, they're just not confident. They're getting bullied. And I, the first thing I always say when I work with people is, tell me what you see when you look in the mirror. Tell me how you respond when someone starts attacking you. Because that's oh, no. typically where the answer lies, right? That's the first place to look before you start looking at the other things. Yeah, that makes sense. It's almost, you know, like a learned trait that it's, they get that from somewhere and that's that observational piece. Yeah, I never really thought of that. Okay, this is really good stuff. I appreciate the one-on-one -on -one therapy session here. This is great, Heather. I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> So we'll, we'll definitely have to have all the listeners get a copy of your current book, your number one bestseller, and then your new book coming out yet to be titled working title. That's coming out end of 2021 sometime. November. November. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So now we got a release date so we can, we can be sure and keep all the listeners abreast of that too. That's awesome. 
So one question I always like to ask is, you know, in the lines of Jim Collins and the author of Good to Great and Built to Last, what is your, he calls it a BHAG, a big, hairy, audacious goal, meaning if time and money are not an obstacle, what is it that you are wanting to accomplish? Well, so that's similar to one of my guests on my podcast, Colin O'Brady. He talks about what's your Everest, right? Yes. So what's the mountain that you want to climb? What's that big mountain? So for me, my Everest this year is, and I actually included Colin's challenge in my new book so that readers will get to a little bit more insight on that. But for me, I'm always putting out huge goals. And one of them, I didn't even know I was going to take on. I didn't. I knew I would do another TEDx talk, but I didn't know when it would be. It was not on my docket to do this year, but they just contacted me and asked me if I would do one this year. So I'm adding a TEDx talk this year, which is, it's a, it's a, it definitely is something you want to represent you in an amazing way because it lives on forever. You can't erase it after. Right. So that's a big one. And then my goal is for my new book to be a New York Times bestseller. I wasn't able to do that on my first because I self-published with my first. This one's coming out with HarperCollins Leadership. So I do have the opportunity to to be a bestseller. I'm a bestseller on Amazon, but this would be, you know, the traditional route. So that's a huge goal. Another one is I unexpectedly was named top 25 U.S. female keynote speaker in 2020. So I want to go to the top five in 2021. That's fantastic. That's awesome. That's (laughs) That's great. Love that. What, what is some of the, what do you do in downtime? What is somebody that, that lectures on confidence and coaches and does all of this stuff and is a, and is a mom and all of that? What do you, COVID notwithstanding, what do you, what, like, do you, do you travel? What, what is your other passions? Well, I mean, it's very different. You know, the past year is sure. completely different. Yeah. I traveled all of the time for work. My podcast was based out of LA and I was in New York all the time for meetings. So for me, I was traveling a ton, which can be a lot of fun because I've made friends, you know, all over the country, which has been great. So that disappeared, obviously, and being live on stage disappeared, which is another passion of mine. I just happened to get get paid and do it for work. I love it. So that part's been hard, but you know, while I'm home, it's spending more time with my son, you know, working out has always been a great stress relief for me and usually getting to see friends. We don't do that as much anymore. So it's been definitely a challenging year, but a year where you get to know yourself even better because you spend more time at home than we ever have. (laughs) Right. Yeah, that's, that's That's true. That's good. Mark, do you want to ask your question? You always want to know this of guests. <laughs> I do. It's it's kind of just a personal insight, and it's grown to sheer curiosity on every episode we do, is I always like to ask our guests is, when you were a little kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? I remember when I was very young wanting to be an actress and someone saying to me, mm-hmm. that's an unrealistic goal. You can't make money you know, doing that. And I remember listening and saying, okay. You know, like, oh, that's right. and it, it, it's so shocking to me now as a mother, because my son could tell me he wants to be anything. And I'd say, of course, you could do it. You know, you just have to build a strategy, a plan, put the work in, create the contact. Right. You know, right. There's things, steps you need to take, but you can totally do it. And so for me, it's interesting when people tell me I'm disconnected at work, something's missing. I ask that question. What was it that you really wanted to do when you were young before people told you you couldn't do it? And right. it's no surprise to me now to see I love being on stage speaking when as a child, all I wanted to do was be on the stage. So it's funny that those things come full circle. Yeah, that's exactly right. That makes total sense. So you you grew up to become what you wanted to be. In in a a sense, right? In a sense. Yeah, that's really cool. Well, as we wrap it up, Heather, I really appreciate all the insight. There is a wealth of information in this episode. I know the listeners will get a lot of it. Within the storyline, we'll we'll put the links to your website, to your LinkedIn. And thank you very much. There's there's a lot to digest. I've got notes over here that I've got to go back through as I listen to this again. But we really appreciate it. And we look for really big things from you coming for 2021. And I know those those are some very high goals. But after sitting and talking with you for a half an hour or so, I see no reason why you won't hit those. We're working on them. <laughs> <laughs> great. That's thank great. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank time. you, Heather. Have a fantastic week. Thanks, guys. You too. We appreciate All right, it. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.
Well, that wraps this up. Thanks for joining everybody. Hope you got value out of digging deeper behind the scenes of security and cybercrime today. Please don't forget to help keep this going by subscribing free to our YouTube channel at Cybercrime Junkies Podcast and download and enjoy all of our past episodes on Apple and Spotify podcasts so we can continue to bring you more of what matters. This is Cybercrime Junkies, and we thank you for joining us.